Hi, and welcome to the offshore drilling portion of this stream. I hope you've all had an enjoyable conference so far and that you're ready for some market insights into what's happening in the offshore drilling industry. Now in Norway, we have a saying called rig er dig. It's loosely translated to drilling is delicious. Now that might perhaps not be the case anymore, but we are seeing that the firm fundamentals uh, and firm improvement in fundamentals we are seeing in the offshore drilling industry is being appreciated by equity markets. So equities are potent and there are interested, interesting investment opportunities to be made. But before we dig into to capital markets, we want to give you guys a high level update on what's been happening on the macro picture since last year and how this industry has been transformed through COVID-19 and the subsequent restructurings and consolidation processes that have uh, been completed and that are still ongoing. Followingly, we want to dig into one of the big questions of the industry, which is how long is this industry going to last before it becomes obsolete? Now, we wish we had the answer to that question. We do not, but we do have the answer to an extension to that question, which is what is being priced into rig equities at current? Lastly, to bring things down again, we want to look at a couple of examples of firm improvements, black on white, for a couple of drilling uh, companies that have restructured and how equity markets have responded to those developments. But like I said, let's begin with uh, having a look on, on what's happened since last year's conference. Now to remind ourselves, at last year's conference, Brent stood at 40 and everything looked pretty bleak. Everything was about uh, distressed drilling equities and opportunities in distressed debt. This year around, it's about interesting rig equities. Since then, oil prices have trended upwards towards 70 and 75, which seemed like an utopia last year. This compared to our original assumption of $60 per barrel of Brent on average through 2021 uh, has, up, uh, has surprised on the upside. So oil prices have trended 12% higher than what we originally assumed. This has brought the recovery forward by nine to 12 months and the Improving improvements in fundamentals that we expected to see on the, in, in, on the back end of, of 2022 are already visible in the market today. So Brent is surprised on the upside, which takes us to um, where EMP companies are standing currently in, in the current oil price environment. So the first takeaway from, from this slide, as you can see on the left-hand side, is pretty obvious, and that is that EMP companies are generating significantly more operating cash flow this year than the last. So this is no surprise given the way Brent has developed. The more subtle point and, and even more important point is that if we look at this operating cash flow relative to CapEx, dividends, uh, and so on, we see that offshore EMP companies are generating more excess cash than they ever have. So they are in a very good place where they can continue to reinstate dividend programs, pay back uh, capital to, to their shareholders and stakeholders, whilst at the same time increase their uh, capex budgets, both for green and brown industries. Now, if we move to the right-hand side of this slide, we see the same story in a different format. It's the net interest-bearing debt levels of these same companies and how it developed from Q419, pre-COVID, up until Q420, and to where we stand today. So obviously, and this is no surprise, net interest bearing debt increased throughout 2020. Um, what's more interesting is what's happened since then. So if you look at how net interest bearing debt levels have developed through the first half of 2021, we see that these are down 17%. So dramatic decrease in net interest bearing debt and the leverage of EMP companies. And there are in an even, even better state now than what they were, were pre-COVID. Now, if you take that 17% reduction and play around with it, turn the number upside down and assume everything else to be equal going forward, these same, same companies will be net cash within three years. So again, needless to say, EMP companies are in a very good spot given the current oil price environment. And they have the capital to, or the cash flow to increase their capital budgets for both green and brown industries. And we're already seeing the effects of this in the drilling industry. 
So if we zoom into the drilling industry and look at how the, this industry has been affected by, by COVID-19, uh, there's one important point to be made. If you look at the supply of drilling rigs pre-COVID, up until now, it has been reduced substantially. For floaters, the supply is down 17%. For jackups, it's down 6%. And this is a permanent reduction in supply driven by consolidation and restructurings that has shaken loose assets that were previously collateralized by bank debt. At the same time, if we zoom uh, into where we stood last year for demand at last year's conference and how that has developed up until now, we see that the demand for ultra deep water units or floaters is up 9%, whereas jack of demand is up 2%. So overall, the drilling industry has benefited from a permanent reduction in supply and a cyclical upswing in demand due to uh, an improving and, and pretty healthy oil, oil price environment. So the supply demand balance has improved. Uh, the total supply demand balance, I should say, has improved. And we'll dig deeper into the marketable uh, supply uh, balance on, on this slide. But first, uh, if we look at, at how the day rates have developed, we want to look at the development since pre-COVID-19 and up until now, in order to avoid the Russian, Russian percentages uh, provided by where day rates bottom out post-COVID-19. So before COVID-19, day rates leveled out at about $220,000 a day for premium equipment in the ultra deep water market. If we look the fixtures for 2022, uh, that have already been signed in 2021, we see uh, a level of, of roughly 250,000 a day for the same type of equipment. So day rates have increased 10% since pre-COVID-19. Now, the important point to be made here is that the marketed utilization, so the number of rigs that are being marketed on these same contracts and fixtures is roughly unchanged. So same number of rigs being bid in for the same number of contracts, but day rates are still up 10%. We argue that this is a sign of discipline in the industry. And discipline is something we've been waiting for for a long, long time. Uh, and on that point, uh, we can move onwards uh, to look at how balance sheets have developed because the reduction in net interest bearing debt for the industry is an important factor that has con contributed to more discipline. So if we took, take a look at, at uh, a sample of, of companies and look at how their net interest bearing debt levels have, has developed since pre-COVID-19 and up until now, we can see that the debt load of the industry has been reduced dramatically. So it's down 94% for, for our sample and the drilling industry has a reputation for a reason, but it is no longer a levered industry with uh, a ton of financial risk. So the optics have improved um, through comprehensive restructurings that have been done properly. Now we do not expe expect the, the big mutual funds of the world to scramble, scramble for rig equities anytime soon, but we do argue that rig equities have become more investable for a larger portion of capital markets. And we'll see the effects of that towards the end of this presentation. Now with uh, lower leverage, obviously also comes lower financing cost or um, lower net interest on an absolute basis. So if you look at uh, the net interest of the industry relative to uh, revenues pre and post COVID, we see that that metrics, metric has moved from 16% down to 4%. This is contributing to, to an increased flexibility in capital allocation for uh, the drillers, and some are even starting to mention free cash flow, dividends, and buybacks. And these are topics we haven't spoken about in this industry for a very, very long time. So again, a large improvement that makes this industry more investable for a larger portion of capital markets. Now, all of these improvements uh, are visible in the market, uh, but there is one big question that still remains, and that is how long will we be drilling wells to extract hydrocarbons offshore? It's, an, it's a question we wish we had the answer to, uh, but we do not. But we do have the answer to an extension of that question, and that is how long 
the drilling industry um, drilling industry survival is being priced into to rig equities at different day rates. So this is a bit of a mouthful, so I'll take it sequentially. If we assume day rates to remain at 250,000 a day, as is the level we're seeing for fixtures next year, uh, we need to assume that a drilling rig uh, has a cash flow, cash flow duration until 2040. We think that 2040 uh, is a bit too aggressive an assumption to be made by equity markets at current, and that there is at least some upwards pressure on day rates priced into equities. So if we assume an incremental 10% increase in day rates up from 250 to 275, and again, as a reminder, the first 10% we have already witnessed happened with relative ease on the back of discipline uh, in, in bidding, uh, we see that the required duration of the industry moves from 2040 to 2030. And that is an assumption that is a lot more edible for equity markets. Um, if we take it one step further and assume an additional 10% increase, and we'll, we'll stop there, uh, and, and uh, we won't start assuming mid-cycle day rates and so on, but assume day rates of $300,000 a day, which is not an arbitrary, arbitrary level, because this is where the harsh environment market leveled out uh, in their first step of the recovery. Subsequently, it moved to, to $400,000 a day, but we won't go there because uh, returns start to look astronomical. But at $300,000 a day, and uh, a firm, uh, and for the drilling industry in 2030, which again is a very edible assumption in our view, uh, we see that asset values move 35% higher from 150 to 205. Coincidentally, 205 is, is the, the value we use for ultra deep water equipment in our net uh, asset value um, calculations. And for the keen readers of our research, uh, you'll know that we see significant upside uh, to uh, where equity markets currently price the restructured drillers. So the answer as to when the drilling industry will uh, end is not one we have, but we think that on reasonable assumptions, uh, equity markets will become increasingly confident uh, in, in the current valuation of equities and, and see a continued uh, upside from, from where the market currently prices some of these companies. Now, like I said, uh, to finish it off, we want to bring it down to firm examples of improvements, black and white, and see how capital markets have responded to those improvements. So the first case we want to highlight is Volaris. So upon its, its reemergence from, from its chapter 11 process, uh, Volaris was net cash, which is positive, but it had a ton of operational leverage. And it was one of the key critiques equity markets had to the company uh, when, when it reemerged. Since then, the company has managed to double its backlog, meaning that it's added more than a billion dollars to its backlog within the course of a, a, a few months. Uh, and very importantly, they've added that backlog at improving day rates. So the implied day rate following the backlog addition is 40% higher than what it was at the mergers. So a firm improvement in fundamentals for the company, addressing one of the key risks to its, to its equity story. And as we can see on the right-hand side of this graph, um, equity markets have been very responsive to that improvement. So equities are potent. Uh, equity markets are following what's happening with these companies and appreciating uh, positive developments. The second case we want to highlight is, is, is one that relates to second-hand values. Um, and specifically, the, the sale of four jackups that Noble, is, Noble announced uh, just more than a month ago. At the time of the announcement, the implied value of jackups through Noble Equity was $47 per unit. The implied value through the transaction when adjusting for backlog was $57. So the second-hand market priced these assets above where the equity markets priced them. What we want to highlight here is that we appreciate the pro pragmatic approach that companies are taking to asset values and where they're being priced compared to where second-hand markets um, value these same assets. Now, obviously, equity markets prefer hard cash uh, over drilling units, 
uh, and as we can see on the right hand side of this graph, um, from the point of announcement and up until now, Noble Equity has repriced 25% higher. So overall, the macro picture is significantly better than what we expected last year. The recovery has been brought forward and we're already seeing visible uh, improvements in, in demand, day rates, on the structurally lower supply. So the industry is, is in a, a significantly better place. And lastly, and very importantly, uh, when companies point or show these improvements black on white uh, in uh, either announced fleet status updates or announced uh, asset sales, equity markets are responsive to those improvements or, and willing to price in um, the development in the industry. So with that, I'll thank you for listening in and hope I wish you uh, an enjoyable rest of this conference. Thank you.